So today, or actually last night, moving a bunch of stuff around so I uh, can free up some space. I really got to clear off the shipping dock. And no, this, this video is not about my dirty floor. It is about my oldest piece of punch card equipment. And it's not what you think. Here it is. Any quick guesses? This thing is actually a punch, a card punch for a jacquard loom. Let's take a look at it. Wood and steel. Well, I assume steel. Some of it might be cast iron. I don't know. But uh, yeah, I was uh, helping a friend's father close down his machine shop, and uh, he uh, he did machining for uh, the brewing industry and cosmetic industry, making little custom parts and things like that for their their equipment. And uh, why he had this, who knows? But he said he didn't want it anymore. So I said, yeah, I'll take it. So yeah, Jacquard Loom. Jacquard Loom, of course, is the basically sort of the origin of the punched card. And it was a way of automating the weaving process. And this uh, Jacquard was a Frenchman. And uh, he basically put together a bunch of ideas from other people, like so many inventions. And in the very early 1800s, I think 1804, it came out with his loom, the Jacquard loom. And the big advantage was you could control the loom with a bunch of punch cards, big funny looking things with big holes, and that would control the loom so you could get intricate patterns with minimal human interaction and uh, fairly error free as well. And that opened up a whole lot of uh, interesting things for the weaving industry. Like I said, he uh, he took some ideas from from some other they're mostly French, uh, French inventors. Uh, Bouchon, I think, was one of them. Uh, like the very first automated looms were actually sort of a paper tape affair. Uh, however, there were some disadvantages and such like that. Uh, Jacquard put it all together, sort of, and uh, made this, uh, this system and used punch cards. Well, everyone knows about the looms. You've probably seen them in museums. Well, you had to punch the card somehow. This is how you did it. And yeah, let's take a quick look at this thing. We have a, uh, a track. It holds a card. And uh, down here we have some foot pedals. And a spring there. Uh, this is all foot driven. And this funny thing here is actually a keyboard. What you do is to push down for the yeah, we're a little sticky. <laughs> I've not done any sort of cleaning with this machine. You push down the keys that you want to kind of kind of like uh, uh, doing a chord on a keyboard to uh, figure out which holes to uh, uh, get the holes set up. And you can see what happens is underneath there are some bars and it, the, the motion gets transferred over through linkages and such like that. And you can see some of these have pulled away. Here, let's, let's do one at a time so you can kind of see. Like I said, this thing is extremely sticky. You know, it probably hasn't been lubed in, I don't know, 80 years? I don't know. Uh, th these Jacquard looms were actually in use for a very, very long time. And uh, it was only until the uh, 70s or 80s where they actually started putting computers on them. Anyway, you can figure which holes you want to punch, and then you you really have to get a good stomp on that pedal there. And it brings down the punch. Well, I have a lot of punch cards, but they're all 80 column IBM style punch cards, so I had to make a punch card for this thing. And here we go. Yeah, I, I, these things were generally, I think, made of cardstock. I didn't have any cardstock that was uh, 4 by 12 So I, I used some very thin corrugated cardboard, but it seems to work. And actually, yeah, I, 
there's some really crummy holes. I'll show you how this all works, so bear with me. There's a slot here. You can see these little holes here for aligning the card. Got some locks here. You can see. Oops, sorry, bumped the camera there. And uh, hopefully this will work well. Let's punch a couple of things and pow. Now hopefully this advanced, like I said. Oh, this little other little pedal here is it frees the mechanism so you can go through. Hey, how about that? We got a couple of holes. What's supposed to happen is it's supposed to advance. And there you has a little um, arrow here. I suppose this this was um, probably a place where uh, uh, numbers for the the column you were on. But you would uh, let's do these holes and wham. And there we go. There are the holes here. And yeah, they even thought it does actually even have a little slide there for your Chad bucket. And you, it looks like you could hang it from the, that little hook there. There's another little hook on there. So yeah, interesting device here. Kind of weird that I have it. I never thought I'd get it. Oh yeah, this is another thing. This, this piece was packed. It seems to be, it was just loose with the machine. It seems to be a little dog here because it looks like People have been pounding on it, and it's slightly tapered. I can't figure out where this goes. It may not be related. So if any of you Jacquard Loom fanatics out there know, um, I'd love to know. Uh, oh, I should also mention there are no nameplates on this machine at all. They may be gone, maybe never had one. So I don't know who made it. I don't know which loom it was for. I don't know when it is from. If I were to guess, looking at... The metalwork and such like that, I'd say probably late 1800s. However, like I said, if any of you uh, Jacquard Loom fanatics uh, have any idea, I'd love to know. Um, I probably, oh, another thing that's interesting about this machine, which you may have noticed here, these, these are apparently slides, which under the thumb, the thumb thing here, apparently you could cover some of the uh, the keys, uh, you know, I guess if you wanted different format cards, so kind of like locking out, locking out those, uh, those rows. Uh, anyway, I don't know what I'm going to do with this thing. It is pretty big. You can see it's, it's nearly five feet long or so. And, um, I don't know what I'm actually going to do with this thing. I'm actually thinking about possibly donating, donating it to a museum because, yes, it's cool, it's a punch card thing, but it is not really computer. And, uh, yeah, it is it's it is my thing, and it is sort of not my thing. So I'm, I'm kind of on the f fence about this thing. Um, yeah, pretty neat. But uh, I thought I'd give you a, a guys a shot at looking at this thing. Because, yeah, you see, you see the looms. You can go to, you know, historic villages and museums and such like that they often have the looms but um i don't know uh, if i if i've ever seen uh, the actual card punch in a museum so okay well uh minimal minimal in minimal interference by the cats this time they must be playing somewhere else um so yeah hope you like this and yeah if you have any information on this particular machine you know, if anything strikes you out, oh, that's a uh, Pierre Lafoy from, you know, 1849 or whatever. Uh, yeah, pre please let me know in the comments. Uh, leave a like, uh, share this if you want, or even subscribe. And, uh, yep, got to get back to work because, like I said, I got to clean this dock off. And, um, yeah, because I'm getting some more goodies in, lots of goodies. And yeah, those are mostly computer goodies. So we will uh, we will uh, get around to that. So yeah, just maybe I'll give you a quick look at the underside too. Oh, there's the chute. There's all the linkages. Anyway, yeah, if you like this, leave a like. And uh, I'll keep making videos. 
All right, guys. I should. Oh, here comes a cat. Is he gonna get into the picture? No. Okay. Okay, I'll see you guys later. Bye now.